out here at Red Rocks, um, or it's really Sinclair Point. It's a very interesting place out here, and it's very photogenic. You don't just have the seals, you have anything from um, albatross out there, not too far away sometimes when there's stormy weather as well, um, through to um, reef herons, which are very rare around the Wellington coast. I think there's only about two pairs, but I photographed them around here quite a bit. Um, little um, shorebirds, oyster catchers, all that sort of stuff. Um, we get the sacred kingfisher, um, about four or five different varieties of shag and cormorant, and dolphins, whales, and I've seen orcas out here. Yeah, well, um, go and take a few photos. In fact, um, this little fellow over here, he's a year old um, male, I think. We can only see the bottom half of him just from here. Well, I'm just going to wander in and just um, hopefully not disturb him too much because you definitely don't want to disturb a seal. Um, and we'll see how we go. Whoop. And you don't want to get between them whoop, and the ocean. And you definitely don't want one behind you. Hello. How are we? I think I've seen you before. We're just going to get a little shot down here. Oh, he's beautiful. He's in very good shape. And he's just sunbathing in our Wellington sun. Now I'm just checking here. I'm just checking my metering that um, you, you wouldn't want to really be on spot metering today so I'm on, on a more average weighted me, um, metering uh, so that I've got everything sort of sorted out uh, as far as exposure. I'm, I'm going to um, underexpose by one stop because it's really glary out here, it is really really bright and um, that will take away a little bit of the brightness. Oh, my mate over here is doing yawns and things and that was some great shots and great teeth came up there just the one round the round the side and I'm just gonna work myself onto you always got to keep your eye on things around here um, probably shutter priority would would suit for me today I want to get a reasonably high shutter speed um, and I can and I can get a thousandth of a second and that will stop any sort of mo motional movement so I'm just looking down here at my my mate I'm just going to come a little bit. Fractions are important, but you just got to bear in mind that there might be another seal somewhere that looks like a bit of a log, a log of wood, and that's happened before. I know photographers who have trodden on seals, and it's not a pleasant experience, and you don't want to do it because it's not pleasant for you, and it's not pleasant for the seal, and seals deliver bad bites, and if they don't bite you, they'll kill you with their bad breath. Okay, he's gone to sleep he's not interested in me and I am getting a th thousandth of a second at f9 so that's pretty reasonable now when you look out here oh oh my friend over here is just just giving me a good view and I'll just come oh you now that was one of the best series of seal shots that I have got for quite some time. Wow! And does he have bad breath and bad teeth? But that was amazing. His mouth was wide open. He did a big, huge yawn, and I got it. Woo! You focus on a central point, usually an eye, a tooth, something that, that stands out and that is, is quite bright, and you go for it. You, you reel off a few shots. I tend to reel off shots not continuously, but pressing my, my finger on the on the button just slowly each and every time so um, I'm not having to edit too much in the future. So the lens I'm using is a um, Sigma 150 to 500mm lens and it's optically stabilised uh, and you know the stabiliser is very important to me in this situation especially if I get down in the, in the um, shutter speeds um, normally with a lens that's this big and, and, and um, quite cumbersome uh, you couldn't shoot um, below 500th of a second um, w with a wide open aperture um, unless you had image um, stabilisation. And this is not a terribly fast lens. Um, it's, at, its maximum is, is um, 5.6 to f6.3. So, um, you know, it's, it's not a fast lens, it's a slower lens. So I have to be careful with what I do to ensure that I can stop the motion of these seals when they, they do in fact move around. But most of the time they loll around. So you, um, you just have to be a little bit patient and you have to just listen, use your senses um, and you use, use stealth as well to, to creep up on them, not to shock them or surprise them because they can be quite skittish. 
and you don't want to upset the nature and the, the ecology, but um, really just to get close to them and to, to um, observe them and to be able to take your photos. So, um, yeah, but you know, there's not much action here at the moment, although there's a, a little guy over here that's um, quite interestingly placed against a rock, and they are just loving the sunlight, absolutely loving it, which is not what we're loving because it's actually quite harsh. It would be better in an overcast sort of situation. This is my little squeaker. Kids and animals, it's great for. Makes adults laugh. Um, sometimes kids look at you as if you're silly. Uh, it doesn't seem to bother the, the um, seals, but they give you a glance though. Um, sometimes they look over at you or some, some um, animal pops its head over some rocks or something like that. And uh, they seem quite happy with it. If they weren't, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah an animal um, quite often just pops up its head and you go wham, you, you, you take a little little shot and um, quite often you get a really good one because it's uh, that inquisitive little look in their eyes, uh, whether it's a bird or an animal or wh whatever, um, but it's, um, it's quite a good thing. And we've got a little, little um, bird here that I can't even identify, but it looks like a sparrow, but it's not. It's a pipit or something. And we'll sort out the identification with that later from um, one of Jeff Moon's bird books. You know, they're my Bible. You know, Jeff was my mentor, and uh, um, he probably identified most of the birds and photographed most of the, the birds in New Zealand here. And he photographed them beautifully. And when you get a new one, you go, yes. And nowadays, I post them on Facebook and see if, um, you know, if I can't quite identify them with one of Jeff's photos. Um, somebody in, in, on Facebook will, will do that for me. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, lots of communication, lots of dialogue, important. With birds, you have to understand their habits. You have to understand that it's a patient sort of thing. It's not going to happen e each and every time. Um, you've, you know, I come out here um, sometimes two or three times a week um, if I get an opportunity. And I'm watching and, and studying habits and seeing where the the the, um, the bird life um, and the habitat is, and especially in relation to what they do during the tides. Um, and usually at low tide, there's a fair bit of feeding going on. Uh, also, um, if you've got a storm, uh, quite often the birds will come in closer to the land. You'll get the the petrels and the um, albatross, the mollymawks, those sort of birds. They're in real close, and and that that's. Um, that's a pretty cool sort of situation to have because it makes it a lot easier. Uh, it's also interesting studying their, their flight uh, in certain situations, you know, when they've got the updrafts and um, when it's calm, it's two, two totally different situations. So um, you've got to study that pretty carefully also. Um, understanding what lenses you can use as well. And uh, that's why I use a 150 to, to 500 mil um, zoom because I just know that in this environment there are going to be birds that I'm going to get quite close to and you know, like the reef heron because they're not scared of humans, not in their environment, they know that they can get out of out of areas really quickly. Um, so you know it would be the 150 mil side of the zoom and then you've got some um, shyer birds that uh, maybe the oyster catches that you're having to use the 500 mil length. So yeah, that's, that's quite important as well. But, most of the time I'm using shutter priority on the camera so that I can pick my speeds also of, um, you know, and I'm, I'm shooting a lot of birds in relation to art also, so, you know, my, my shutter speeds will be blurred, you know, the, the, I'm aiming for blurred motion. So, yeah, you've got to be um, flexible and, and, you know, pretty much um, get out there and, and, and try things out and, and know what the birds do. Oop, there's a plane right above us. And these seals don't even react to planes, you know. They're quite used to being just 15 minutes out of our city. So that's pretty, pretty neat. I'm going to get this one. He's going to, oh, a sideways yawn. Woo! It's just a matter of keeping an eye on things and making sure that you're, you're splitting your vision so that you're watching what's in front of you and what's close and that you're also watching what's, what's around you. That's, um, Spotting your vision is quite important as a photographer in a general sort of sense. Well, we're not happy. Take another step and he'll open his mouth again. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And you get a great shot, don't you, you know? 
One of the things that I do sometimes is I fire in a little bit of fill and flash. Obviously we don't need any today because um, we've got really good catch lights from Mr Sun up there. Um, but on a um, overcast day, sure, I'd just fire a little bit of flash in there and uh, there would be a catch light in the seal's eyes and sometimes you can liven the fur up a little bit as well. And you know, I bounce off my hand also, you know, which is a really good little trick. This guy's posing and um, it's like being in the studio because he's just got the perfect light on him and he's um, positioned just immaculately. It's like a, you know, between a three to one and a five to one lighting ratio. So you've got lots of lovely tone in the fur and you've got um, detail and, and, and on one side you've got uh, fantastic light. Uh, on the other shadow side, there's been, because he's sitting next to a pool, it's actually bouncing, the light's bouncing off the pool into, into his fur as well on the other side. And um, yeah, it's just, just really lovely. It's, um, it's actually fantastic. It's classic, isn't it? He is classic. Whenever I go anywhere, and particularly when I, when I come to a place like this and, and I'm using a longer lenses, I've always got a, a little, little camera as well. Now, you might have heard me say before that um, it's not the camera, it's what six inches behind it, but um, there is some flexibility in having a little, little camera. Um, it means that you're a little bit more mobile. Um, you can um, shoot a little bit wider because, you know, this is, um, as I said, a telly, and this goes from a, a, a wide angle to a, a short telly. And um, this is a great little lens for, for recording the, the actual environment rather than the specific of, say, just a seal. Um, and it, it just allows you that, that flexibility, so it's really seriously cool. And sometimes what I do, just to record what I'm doing, is shoot a little bit of video and just say what I'm doing, and it um, reminds me a, a bit later as to um, perhaps what shutter speeds, ISO, um, um, apertures that I'm using, or if I've done something a little bit different, I'll, I'll talk to myself on the on the um, on the video, and it's a, a you know it's it's quite useful. Sometimes you can actually get the the, the million dollar hero shot on a camera like this. That's that's cool. Missed. You missed the odd one or two too. You know, he was in beautiful light then. So he's quite comfortable with me coming forward, and there he goes. Whoop! But if you're quick enough to get it, that's the. Oh yeah, you um, definitely um, don't want to turn your back on wildlife, which I didn't do then. I had them out of the side of my eye. And every so often, um, you might get a little warning because just don't forget that you're in their environment.